in, in 2018, which in some ways feels like a lifetime ago, you granted me the gift of a sabbatical, and, and not just a sabbatical, but a trip to Jerusalem for Holy Week. The, the pilgrimage, or the class that I signed up for, followed Holy Week in the Orthodox tradition. That year, like this one, Orthodox Easter is a week later than Western Easter. But I was there well ahead of that. But having that pilgrimage in mind, I was paying less attention to the days of Western Easter's Holy Week. <clears throat> Our presiding bishop was in Jerusalem for Holy Week, the Western one. <clears throat> and I met some folks in his party, and they'd ask if I was going to go up the Mount of Olives to walk down with the pilgrims tomorrow, Palm Sunday. I hadn't planned to, and honestly, I'm not even sure I'd thought about it because I was putting Holy Week a week off. But you know, it sounded like a really good idea. So I went. And, I, and I'm grateful that I did that with some people who had been before because um, it was, you know, was a lot of folks. <clears throat> but I'm so grateful that I did that. Thousands of pilgrims marching down the hill to Jerusalem. At one point in that journey, I was near a group of Filipino pilgrims, and having lived in the Philippines as a child, that felt very familiar and comfortable, and they began to sing and shout hosannas. It was a wonderful, lively experience. Jesus is riding a donkey into Jerusalem, claiming the signs of kingship. We know that some of the factions of zealots, those who were more interested in overthrowing Roman occupation than ushering in the kingdom of God, had been following Jesus. In the days before and after his arrival in Jerusalem, Jesus makes clear that a political overthrow is not what he is about. And those folks begin to fall away. The crowd, who was certainly pro-Jesus during his entry into Jerusalem, seems quickly swayed by the religious authorities in a different direction, and things turn dangerous quickly. At the end of this service, we will hear the Passion Gospel. We know how this story goes. But like my gift of coming down with thousands of pilgrims from the Mount of Olives into Jerusalem, there is something to reenactment. We practice a reenactment every Sunday. At the Last Supper, Jesus said, Do this in remembrance of me. Gather at the table, share bread and wine. And every Sunday, our remembering Jesus in the sacrament of bread and wine is more than a memorial, more than a simple remembering. It is anamnesis. Anamnesis is a Greek word that's not easy to translate in English. It is different than a memorial <clears throat> to remember one who is gone. Anamnesis is a remembering that makes that one present. That is what we do each Sunday. 
This week, Holy Week, we attempt anamnesis, we attempt to make God present in other ways. Today, we started outside to get a taste of what Jesus' entry into Jerusalem might be like. We heard those words of Zechariah, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem! Lo, your King comes to you, triumphant and victorious is He, humble and riding on a donkey. Was today a perfect reenactment? No. But neither was that Palm Sunday in Jerusalem a perfect reenactment. <clears throat> but it's certainly better than us just listening and talking about Jesus simply seated here. On Monday, Thursday, we will re reenact the Last Supper, complete with foot washing. We will be reminded that Jesus came to serve, not to be served. And we will be reminded of the very beginning of the sacrament of communion, the very beginning of the remembering that makes Jesus present in the bread and the wine. We will end the service by stripping the altar, symbolizing turning this altar space into a tomb for Good Friday. There are two days every year where we don't or can't celebrate the Eucharist, the great Thanksgiving, Good Friday and Holy Saturday. Those two days, Jesus is in the tomb. On those days, we don't need an altar for communion. Good Friday is a very somber service. We will venerate the cross. <clears throat> we will not have a reenactment on Good Friday. I mean, I like to think that I'm pretty committed, but Jesus was nailed to the cross, so we don't have to be. On Easter morning, we will find the stone rolled back and find that He is not here. He is risen. I hope you will join us as we walk with Jesus from this triumphal entry into Jerusalem to the Last Supper and to the cross. Getting to Easter morning without the cross, it leaves out a central part of the story. If someone ever told you following Jesus was easy, I think they lied. Look at His journey. How can we follow Jesus and think it will be easy? And following Jesus doesn't save us from all the difficulties and tragedies a human life can have. But in the end, all will be well. If all isn't well, it's not the end. These haven't been the easiest last two years. And when it finally looked like the light at the end of the pandemic tunnel was in sight. Russia invaded Ukraine. Yet another reminder that this creation for so many is still a nightmare that falls short of the dream that God has for all God's creation. 
We are a people of hope. And in times like these, how do we continue to hope? We hope because the one we follow spent three days in hell, so we don't have to go there. In the end, all will be well. If all isn't well, it's not the end. Amen.